Hey all, welcome back to SSX on Tour. I'm in Cedic. With me again is Blank Tester. Uh, here I am. <laughs> Dead Turo. Hey. <laughs> Alright. We have some more cash, so I'm gonna buy the rest of the monster tricks. Fuck so I yeah. can, you know, show them off, have the full set. Uh... The wizard. Cool. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Steve. Now you have full set of abilities. Yeah. Cause again, it's just, you know, uh... Two to each side of right. the right thumbstick, so yeah. four one foots and then eight main ones. That's over a million dollar value. You could have bought a house with that. Yeah, oh. I mean, there's other things you could buy for a million dollars. Yeah, imagine that. Like, you had to, you'd have to buy your character like a house to live in and such yeah. as they did all their events. On, SSX uh, immersive sim. The only problem I have with that Shit. is that like it would age really poorly since nobody owns a house anymore. Everybody <laughs> rents. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It'd be... It would start out as a... Uh, you know, they could try to make it a dystopia, but by the end, we would all be looking back on it as a utopia. Yeah, like The Simpsons, kind of. Yeah. Although The Simpsons was never really a dystopia. It was just... I mean... Know. Yeah, it was supposed to be a satire, and then, you know, things got even wilder than fiction, da-da-da. Yeah. yeah. Simpsons uh, now predicted it. Yeah, now, yeah. Oh, after Obama uh, outlawed donuts, uh, you know, The Simpsons was never the same. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to show off some of these, you know, other monster tricks, you yeah. know, so you can see what they're like. Like, this. this one, where I'm going to do a big slam a jamma. Oh, shit, that's awesome. Yeah. Bang -a -a -ding -dong. That. that was the chocolate thunder. Ooh. Yeah, again, like some of these have really what was weird that? names. Um uh, the death ride, the I don't fucking know. The yeah. face sled. Yeah. And you had face the face sled. plant, the face grind, and now you have the face sled. Those yeah. are the corpse roll. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, Just a bunch ooh. of shit along the way. Corpse yeah. screw. Um, I guess you know, I, I I do have some serious things to say now that I'm actually doing like a Pro Master, I think it was Pro Master, uh, slope style event. Yeah. I was kind of avoiding those uh, in the playthrough because I think of like, you know, the increase in difficulty and all the other stuff. That slope style really gets hurt more than racing does, hmm. um, and that's because you know of all the changes that make the event so much harder and slower. Again, that I can you know go through, like because. Again, like, looking at a comparable event in SSX3, like the All-Peak Jam, that was sort of a one-off that gave you, you know, the entire main course and, like, 30 minutes to get, like, 1.75 million points at most. Right. C but compared to that, which, you know, these by these events by Promaster ask you to get, like, more points, like, I need to get, like, what, 2 million? In less track, with less time, uh, with no mm. multipliers or points adders, you need to be doing these monster tricks all the time that, you know, are slowing the game down. <laughs> oh, um, holy shit, slugged. this drop! Yeah, and really drags it out, and you need to really try and keep a good combo, you know, because, yeah. like, that 100,000 point combo will really help. Um, yeah. And so that adds a lot of pressure on you as well. And I unless will say... You're on, hold on. And unless you're on, like, Mind the Gap or Compilation, these tracks are designed to be more, you know, racing tracks, so there could be one or two big-ass set pieces, but... There also might be obstacles and shit in your way uh, that yeah. make it difficult to keep the combo going. So put it all together, and like these Pro Master events for Slope Style are just daunting, repetitive, and then demoralizing. If you oh. lose, if you crash and lose a combo that you've put a whole bunch of effort into, do you yeah. run into some dumb shit? And I guess like I'd, I'd be interested in hearing, you know, because like I never found that as a problem in SSX3, but mm. again, I'm really, really good at it. So if there's someone who thinks like, okay, in SSX3, I need to also get like a 50 times combo and have it be worth a million points to pass something. Uh, yeah. I guess let, let me know. You know, am I feeling what you were feeling last game, or is it truly like it's just a never really fundamentally get that different feeling experience. in, in yeah. three, whereas yeah. you get it here. I mean, as someone who has beaten this game before, like, I will say that I actually kind of like the bigger emphasis on the combo system like how much more it wants you to use it but also yeah with the the frankly unnecessarily unnecessary changes to the uber trick system with the monster tricks of course it really does just make tricking more repetitive especially with how much more you need to do them you know 
Like, even though eventually in SSX3 you're going to be doing only, like, monster tricks and only, like, two or three of them at that if you really want the highest scores, it still felt like there was more to do there because you had to manually do, like, a specific combination of uber tricks mm. to get those monster tricks. And whereas here, you just have to move the right stick up and to the left or to the right over and over for 10 minutes and also mm. keep your combo. Yeah. And, oh. and again, back in SSX3, that's if you want to get 4.5 million points and get fifth place on the scoreboard, you know, uh, on Burger City rather than 4.4 million points. Uh, mm. You know, like, I really don't think you need to do SSX3's monster tricks to pass, though they do make everything make a lot easier. easier. Yeah. You know, oh. whereas, oh. again, Whoa. that's not even an option here in tour on tour. Um, yeah. Honestly, I'm uh, thinking about it like, all of the tech stuff I mentioned in SX3, like, you know, like frame canceling or tapping or, you know, whatever, mm -hmm. it's not even worth... I, I'm sure it's probably in the game, but it's not even worth doing here. There's no tech I'd say you should learn outside of what you need to do for the game. Because, again, huh. you need to do, like, the best you can to win the game. And yeah. sure... I only need to get 200,000 more points in the last third of the track to get first place. It's, you know, getting those records are entirely optional. They just get you more hype, yeah. da-da-da. But yeah, they still get you more feel money. like something you should go for more than, you know, the platinum medals were mm. uh, yeah. in three. Especially with how know, in the it's early just, game... It's just, like, I don't have a feel for, like, am I, am I in a good place? Do I really need to start tricking harder? Da-da-da in this game versus, you know, an SSX3. Hmm. Uh, yeah. It just doesn't feel as good. And that's kind of why you've seen me stick to racing for Pro Master, because, well, racing is simple. Go fast. Yeah. Sure, you need to, you know, go really fast, but... Hell, you... Yeah. you know, it's, it's still it's, the same formula, pretty much. Yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll be honest, I think part of the reason why it's... Uh, it's harder to tell is because the the game's not communicating that information to you quite as nicely as it did before like about points um especially with monster tricks we've talked about before how the ui fades away when you do the monster trick and how that actually does a disservice to you because you don't have a good gauge intuitively about which one is going to be like well, does it make more sense for you to hold that monster trick for a long time? Or maybe just do a different monster trick? You know, like, you just don't have that same level yeah. of information. And I think that probably contributes, at least partly, to your uh, your feeling that, you know, the... the you know, I don't know. It, it's less in your control. Yeah, you know? I totally understand. Like, yeah, with all that... We're watching this here, so everyone watching this is glued, their eyes are glued to that bottom right corner to go like, no, see, Incentic, I saw you got 25,000 points off of that, but uh, again, <sighs> when you're playing the game and you can't do that, and you look up and it's just, after all that effort, your combo has just become 50,000 points, and your score has just become whatever it is when you don't remember what it was before, yeah. Yeah. you haven't really been able to track it at all along the way, yeah, it doesn't feel... You don't feel as connected yeah. to it. I mean, and like it, yeah. that's that's especially true if you're like trying not to repeat tricks or you're trying you know, you're trying to mix things up, you're trying to take a particular line, you know, any any number of other things you're thinking about are gonna take up the space in your brain that the score might have. Yeah, because I sorry, I didn't want to interrupt you here, but like, you know, since this is basically the same, you know, engine and physics and shit as S as SSX3, you know, you can be holding the D-pad to spin and flip and then, you know, hold the opposite ways to stall out. And in SSX3, there was this whole inverted or off-axis or, or stalled, you know, thing to yeah. make it worth doing that. Whereas here, there's none of that. So you could stall out your animation and, you know, do that and ultimately just do less spins and flips and get less boost and less points mm. than if you held the whole way. Like, genuinely, there's no fucking tech. There's no extra tech. There's nothing more than, well, just hold these things as long as you can. And, yeah. well, now that you hear me getting more heated, I mean, that's, I think that's seriously why, again, there's, like, so much less of a scene or people trying to do anything in this game. Yeah. They, yeah. Not, you know, like, they just simplified it by, you know, I getting think rid of 
tr- experimenting, whatever. Yeah, it sounds like it's it's more casual focused experience. Which, like before, you had to- mentioned that tech stuff to me. I didn't know about any of that tech stuff for the previous games. So like, I would have been playing that those games as a casual. I'd have been playing this game as a casual. Maybe I would have enjoyed this game more. I don't know that I would have because you know the repetitiveness is is itself kind of yeah. a problem. But but like the you know and also the just the sheer difficulty. Nice landing. Yeah. That was a very good head yeah. bonk it's landing. It's the gorilla like head. The, yeah, yeah, that's I what mean, it is. Again, I'm I'm scared of making a big deal out of minor things, you know, because uh-huh. I can do that. But just like it's fun to play SSX3 and go off of a jump and, you know, start rotating one way, but then stall it out and, you know, see your character going slower. Also, see on screen stalled. See some, you know, bonus stall Visual points impact, yeah. meter, you know, uh, 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 thing counting up to show you the extra points you'll get. Uh, it's fun to see all those things, you know? Yeah. I mean, that's, uh, yeah. Yeah. And another thing about, like, sort of like the feel of Monster Tricks is that in SSX3, your monster tricks, you knew how much points those were. Yeah. Like, you knew an Executioner was 30k, Stone Age was 20k, uh, the Alpine Star was 20k. Right? I, I think you're comparing apples to oranges by doing that, because yeah. monster tricks in this game are just uber tricks. But that's the thing, like, you're, you don't know how many points they are, so it... Like also does contribute right. a little bit to that. Yeah, like. yeah. When the when you start doing the full animation and the UI starts to fade out again, if you're deliberately paying attention, you could see. Okay, it just jumped from eight thousand to fourteen thousand. So it's like I got like a seven k point buff mm-hmm. from doing that. Yeah. Um, I mean, again, you, you know, like doing the monsters is definitely worth it, especially you know trying to get up to full boost. Uh, yeah, I mean, doing monsters is absolutely worth it. It's not like they've messed made up them worthless. and made yeah, it where them. monsters aren't needed. In fact, monsters are super needed, just as much as Uber Tricks were before. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah. Like, I mean, I, I'm pretty sure your monster tricks are worth more points than just your regular, like, level 2 Ubers in SSX3. Yeah, like, yeah, I get, see what you mean. By the yeah. time you've been holding them out over a big jump, yeah, you see that initial points buff. How many points am I going to get for this? Ugh. I saw 24,000 for a split second, and that's, again, because I have the luxury of, well, watching commenting it. over something already recorded and being able to watch. Yeah, yeah I I think the... Uh, I think the, the thing, though, is that, like, you know, in, on a huge jump, you know, okay, I'm just going to go for a monster trick. I'm going to go for an uber trick, whatever. And, then, like, on a small jump, you're like, okay, I'm definitely not going to go for that. But, like, when you restrict the amount of information that a player gets during the gameplay... The, the really tough decisions become even tougher, right? So, like, do I have enough room to do that trick? I think so, but, like, I don't yeah. know if it's even worth it, right? Like, oh, yeah. if it's not going to be worth the points, then, like, why the fuck would I even go for it, you know? Especially and, with like, the camera. And, like, if you don't know the points, then it's like, uh, it might be worth it, it might not be worth it. I have no way to know. Yeah, I said this you know? kind of jokingly before, but, yeah, with, like, Tricky and SSX3... I can tell, if I'm watching someone else, I can tell, like, you know, most of the time, if they do an uber trick off something, are they going to land it? Mm, uh, right. And, and and here, yeah, like, I don't know how long actually these tricks are. I know mm-hmm. kind of what airtime you'd need, but when I watch, like, records or, like, watch one of Daggy Boy's playthroughs or such, where mm-hmm. he does, you know, like, two or three of these off one jump, I'm always just, like... Oh, how the hell did you know? Did you not know? Yeah. Like, yeah, I see what you mean in that it needs to be so much more obvious for you to want to go for a monster trick in this game due to, like, the camera and the slowdown and da-da-da. Yeah, th- th- especially the camera really compounds on top of, you know, the question of should I go for this thing? Is it worth it to go for this thing? You need to know how much is something worth and how much time you have to execute it. And with the camera moving and the UI fading away, you don't know either of those bits of information. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it looks cool. It's a cool camera yeah. angle. You know. I kind of feel like... Like, would you guys have preferred it if, like, when you're doing some kind of cool trick or whatever, maybe in the corner of the screen, like, a little picture-in-picture, like, separate camera angle showed, like... You doing it like a different angle, or maybe something like that, or maybe like a snapshot real quick of like the peak of your jump, you know, just to highlight that um, moment. 
I if think that's that'd be, another that'd be thing to try and pay attention to, then... Well, no, I don't mean, like, that would just be an aesthetic thing, right? Like, it wouldn't give you points or anything for for doing that or whatever. It would just be, like, an on-screen, like, look how cool this is, people are watching kind of vibe, you know? Because, like, I think, Maybe. like, when you're doing the, a cool trick, you know, any cool trick you do is going to look even cooler when you're with your friends, right? So, like, if your friends see you do something cool... That's even cooler than when you do it alone. So, like, you would maybe get a little bit of that vibe if you had, like, some indication that, like, a crowd saw you or a cameraman took a picture of you doing that trick or something like that. Like, it doesn't have to in-universe make a ton of sense, but, like, I don't know. Just kind of a thought. Kind of like kind of like when you hear the, the announcer announce, like, a big trick you do in a, in a different game, you know? Like, yeah. it's like the game recognizing you doing something big. Dinner roll with the yeah yeah like I, thinking back like Project Eight Tony Hawk's Project Eight had some of that where uh -huh. there would be a camera in the especially when you were following the filmer in those right. events where you would see like from the filmer's perspective right. and I I wasn't really paying attention to those since yeah. I you know had to do the, all the gameplay but right. maybe other people get more out of that you yeah know? I guess yeah. maybe that'd yeah. be better for YouTube but not better for the game. And, yeah. you know, they didn't design this game with YouTube in mind. Yeah. Although, Not a lot of games get designed with YouTube in mind. One of the other things that we were sort of having a problem with that I think maybe would be a fix for, like, imagine if the entirety of the UI faded, but the score stayed, wow. and it got bigger the more points you got for the trick. Like the oh, that font, would be cool. The font got bigger, like, the more points you were getting for the trick. Yeah, so then it'd be like, oh shit, holy oh, shit, shit, it's, it's getting, getting big. big. Like, that'd be yeah. cool, yeah, I lo I'd love that. That'd be fantastic. Because, like, they already... It's not like the entire UI fades away. The meter at the bottom stays. So it's not like they're averse to keeping some of the UI. Just keep a yeah. different amount of the UI. Like, if, imagine if instead of Monster right there, it was showing you your points. Yeah, that'd be nice. Yeah. Because the meter, I mean... I don't know how useful knowing what the meter's at is. Especially once it's already at max. Uh... Yeah, again, like, with this with this game, like, you know, it's harder to get up to full boost. Um, you know, By they the way, make congrats that on, on getting to approximately 14.7. Yeah, and also I'm yeah. getting second. Like, I genuinely, just from everything we talked about before, I genuinely just, by the end of that event, did not care enough to try and get first. Yeah. yeah. And that's something I didn't feel in any of the previous games. Um, to yeah. be fair, though, you don't really need to get first, do you? Like, you're getting progress. No. Right. But yeah, you're still getting progress, you just get less progress. Especially yeah. because in this game, there's actually little reason to, actually, mm -hmm. now that I think it. Like, in the other games, it actually kept track of your medals and stuff. Like, getting oh. all go Like, you couldn't, like, get the like highest rank in SSX Tricky and SSX... Uh, actually, no, I don't think in the first game this you applied. Got, you got more yeah. stat points the better medal you got uh -huh. in one and tricky and yeah you got more cash and i think it did give you more you know progress up to a hundred percent in three and yeah. i th yeah i think here maybe on the legend events though i'm not sure uh you have to get first since they're like the final boss events but yeah like along the way uh it, it, yeah it just gives you less hype and less cash you know mm. you do them uh, on the shreds it's pass or fail you know but yeah. on the competitions yeah. you know. You know, I'm, for a second, uh, sorry, good. Uh, I, well, this is a long thing, so if yours is. Oh, I was just gonna say, for a second, I thought there was only gonna be seventeen of these collectibles on this oh, thing. Oh, thank God! No. And I'm like, oh my yeah, God, thank God, there's, there's more. <laughs> It'd be a yeah, fucking nightmare like that. Look at how kind of specific you have to be with your speed. Right. And such. Oh my God. Yeah. This this was harder than I I was expecting it to be, but yeah. ultimately, yeah. it like didn't take me too long. So yeah. I, I don't know if we're gonna have enough time for this, but I would. So, like, I collect old sports games pretty much. Like, I have every NHL game from, I think, 2004 to the most recent one. And sort of the thing that I... Like, when I'm playing these games, I sort of think about, like, quality of life changes, you know? Sort of like the things we've been talking about here and how nice it would have been if this thing was implemented or if this thing was done differently. And it's always sort of a little bit melancholic because that doesn't happen. Right. Like, this game is from 2005, and it got a Wii sequel that no one played, and 
a 2012 reboot. Like, yeah. there is no going back to SSX on tour and maybe fixing the camera for the monster tricks and allowing you to see your score. That, that's not going to happen, and it's always, just, like, sort of a little bit sad, you know? That's why I think uh, that's why I think the modding scene for yes. PC games oh my God. is really great for reviving and revitalizing old games. You know, like, there are some games that people really love uh, that are much older titles that are still, like, if you take off your nostalgia glasses, there's some stuff about them that's really clunky. Like, yes. Uh, and, like, yes. modders are exactly the right resource to to fix those kinds of things. One of the ones that, like, really threw me for a loop for a while was uh, trying to play uh, games like the original XCOM. Like, the original XCOM is really, really clunky Rough. compared to, like, the experience that I'm used to in a much more modern game. Or, like, if you're playing... Uh, like, Knights of the Old Republic is a great game, great story, great characters, but, like, the gameplay... I know a lot of people really love it, but, like, I yeah. it, I had to get some mods to kind of smooth over some of the things that I was used to as a yeah. more recent oh, player. Oh, shit! Oh, shit, you're a legend. Yeah. Uh, so, again, the, it's, like, 85,000 hype to hit that, so... Yeah. I actually did hit that, I just didn't, like beat the next guy in the ranking so it didn't show my score yeah. go up. I do want to <laughs> say, you hit the top of the, like, wooden grind line from that big jump, and I like to imagine someone was watching that and was like, that right there. That was they legendary. are a legend. So, yeah. okay, we're finally out of Pro Master, and we're here on the final events of the game. The legendary oh, race and the legendary, uh, you know, trick event. When you beat these, you know, then it's like you kind of, you know, win the tour and you'll get the where mm -hmm. are they now? Credits and stuff. Uh, so yeah, kind of the final bosses of the game. We'll be doing that next time. So join us. Oh yeah.